this over to my friend, uh, Mike Copeland, you know from Harrington Performance, you know him from ShopHeavy.com, you know from Diversified Creations, the guy who created the Super Depth tune. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Copeland, give it up. Thank you, Clarence. Thank you very much. So, big hand for Clarence. He comes over every year. I wrangle him out of some whatever he's doing and drag him in here to, to hype everybody up because that's not me. So, okay. <laughs> All right, so well, thank you everyone for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your SEMA show to come do this. We have something really exciting we're gonna share with you. But before I do that, I got a couple things I gotta cover. First, I wanna thank my host. Redline Oil has been a partner of mine for a number of years. I use their product in everything we build. If it's an airing you build, if you buy a crate motor, it comes with Redline Oil. If you buy a, have a car built by Diversified Creations, it comes with Redline Oil. If you're one of you select that can talk us into doing an oil change for you, we're putting red line in there, right? So every fluid in this vehicle is red line. Every single one. Antifreeze, brake fluid, everything. Okay? So I want to thank them. You know, all of the guys, Justin and Art and Phil and Mark, everybody, uh, they just they, they treat me like family and I truly appreciate it. This is five years running. So four shows because of that C word that killed us once, right? So this is five years running that we debuted a new vehicle in the Redline Oval here at SEMA. So um, how, uh, one year ago, I walked out here, Clarence handed me this microphone, I walked out here. We had a truck, a 48 Chevy truck. We had kept it a big secret of what we had done. We didn't really share with but a select few. Those people fit in the category of you're crazy, you can't do that, to, sure, I'll give you a supercharger. <laughs> so, Kim Pendergast from Magnuson. So uh, they fit in all in different categories. It was a very select group that we told what we had done. We pulled the cover off of it, and I got overrun with an onslaught of questions. Everybody asking, there were tons of things, you know, there's no infrastructure. Why are we at hydrogen? Isn't it dangerous? If I had a nickel for every person that told me about the Hindenburg, I could pay for building this car. Right? It's like, do you people realize that was in the 30s? I mean, I can give you all the details on why it happened and what happened and everything else and, and, and the advantages to it having been on hydrogen instead of gasoline, but we'll save that for another time. In that year, since we debuted that truck, we've continued to work on it. We've made great progress. Charles here with the mask on and the white shirt, He's from Wash Engineering, they're helping me with this project, and he has done phenomenal things, and we have learned so much, right? The infrastructure in this country and the technology that creates hydrogen is ever changing. In the last year, we've gone from hydrogen being dirty, and it took lots of energy to create it, to today, green hydrogen is the norm. Green hydrogen is created with zero carbon footprint. So that means we take that hydrogen that's created, and we can put it in our vehicle and run it, and we create transportation with zero carbon footprint. And there's no other technology anywhere currently that's capable of doing that. Okay? Electric vehicles have their place, they do a lot of great things, but that electricity doesn't appear out of the sky. That lithium that creates that battery pack does not appear in your backyard. You just go out and scoop it up after a bit snow. Right? <laughs> so, uh, technology ever changing. Just some brief 3M has created a powder that creates hydrogen. You use this powder and it creates hydrogen. And it creates large amounts of hydrogen. Right? Uh, we have the largest just recently opened here in North Las Vegas, the largest green hydrogen producing station in the world. This place is so big, it can create so much green hydrogen, it can support an annual usage of 40,000 vehicles. That's here in North Las Vegas, right? When we built our first hydrogen truck, it was so hard to get hydrogen in Michigan that there was one place they were open about three months a year. They now have opened that up year-round. 
they're getting ready to update it and it'll have 10 times the capacity it currently has. I bet most people did not know that every Amazon distribution center and every Walmart distribution center around the world, every Hilo runs on hydrogen. Did you know that? A company called Plug Power builds the facility that generates the hydrogen. They generate it on site. They use water, bring it in, use electrolysis to separate the hydrogen. And it never has to be transported. It's right there. They build it on site. I've worked with Plug Power and we now have access to a limited number and ultimately we'll have access all over the country to Plug Power hydrogen supply. Right? The technology is ever-changing. The Chinese accidentally, three years ago, and just recently shared, they were creating hydrogen in an electrolysis state, and they had a power outage. And when they did, all the lights went out in the building where they were generating hydrogen. So they went home. I guess they were done with their 18 hours. But anyway, they came back in the next morning, and it had generated more than 10 times the amount of hydrogen. They figured out that when you generate hydrogen in the dark, it produces it 10 times the rate it does if you do it in the light. Oh, right? They recently shared that with the world. Technology is ever-changing. Okay? Our truck that we debuted last year has spent a year of advancement and a year of development. We've come so far. We started so far ahead of where most were anyway. I mean, when I, when I walked out here and said we had a hydrogen truck, all of my friends in the industry that had ever worked with it, I mean, if I listened to them, I'd have went home and, and, and hung myself because I had wasted a whole bunch of money. It's just simply not the case, right? We've proven so many things that they couldn't do in the past. Technology, the advancement, the experience and the skill between Bosch and, and, and my companies and what we bring. You know, I have people tell me that the most horsepower they could ever make was 128 horsepower with 25 pounds of boost on the V8, right? Our first dyno pull was, was more than triple that, right? Today, our truck makes over 400 horsepower on the tires and it's injector limited. We will very shortly have another iteration of production level injectors, thanks to Bosch, and we'll put those in and uh, we're expected to make more than 500 horsepower for that truck. Right? Completely unheard of things in the past. So there's so much going on with hydrogen. Very shortly I'll pull the cover off of this and we'll show you another advancement of hydrogen. But before I do that, I have some exciting news I want to share about the truck. I've asked Jim McElvain from Optima to come in and, uh, and uh, talk about that. Jim? Woo! Thank you, Mike. Yeah, hold my camera for as, as we talk about the history of what's going on in the aftermarket, it was 6,000 years ago this week that a guy named Grunk invented the wheel. Three days later, a guy named Schrock made one that was faster and smaller, and that's where motorsports basically started. So fast forward to 2022, Optima's Ultimate Streetcar Invitational is taking place this week at the SEMA show. We have almost 100 cars and trucks out there. They're all street legal cars and trucks, 200 treadwear tires, and we have vehicles from nine decades out there, if you can believe that. Nine different decades competing, and, and they're running gasoline, they're running E85, they're running ethanol, they're running diesel, and thanks to Mike Copeland, we've got one running hydrogen. Woo! Yeah! I don't know of any other form of motorsports where you're gonna see nine decades and five different fuel sources but I'm excited about it. It makes people nervous. It makes people scared because it's not the same. It's not what they're used to. Get used to it because there's great people who are into making things go faster and be cooler. And Mike's at the front of the line. And those are the people that you want developing that technology. Mike, thanks so much for having the truck in the Optima Ultimate Street Permutation. Woo! Thank you, Jim. Yeah. And I truly yeah. appreciate Optima taking the, the, the risk and, and stepping outside of the traditional to let us come compete. They, uh, they, they had more than a few questions, and, and I did my best to answer them, so evidently we were good. I'd like to introduce Aaron Oberly. He is the, the driver of the truck. I'm, I'm tied up a little bit this week, and Aaron's, frankly, a much better driver than I am. So I asked him if he would do it. He flew in from Michigan. He also owns Michigan Machine Works and did a lot of the parts in this car, and, and we'll share some of those with you here real quickly, okay? 
So, all right, so I'm almost there. Please bear with me. When you build SEMA level cars, which by the way, I have three of my own personal vehicles that are here in SEMA this week. The Rampage that we debuted in 19 is in the Cook's booth. The truck that we debuted last year is racing Optima, and we have this one, okay? It takes great people to do that, and I have a couple of them that are here, and I just wanted to recognize them real quickly. Um, my painter, I didn't see him yet, Mike Felber. Him, he does all the body and paint work for us. He was really instrumental in creating this. Uh, but I'd like to introduce Gene Ritter. Gene uh, worked for me for about 10 years, okay? Uh, and, and I think as a business owner and as a teacher, uh, you always appreciate when somebody takes what you give them and then makes themselves better for it, right? Gene has taken that that level and has and is, is stretched it out and become so much more. He recently left us and opened his own company, K Ritter Garage. Uh, but I was able to wrangle him to come back in to help us build this. So he was an important part of that. Uh, he has also been named uh, SEMA Top 35 Under 35. So Woo. really, really yeah. proud. Okay, so without any further ado, let's uncover this thing. If you don't know, if you haven't, if you've been following my Facebook page or Harrington's Facebook page, this is the 1964 Falcon Sprint. build at the levels we do. Everything we build is intended to be driven. I mean, who would have thought a year ago when we put that 48 Chevy pickup in here that it would be racing Optima? Don't be surprised if this is racing Optima next year. Right? We build cars to be driven, to be beat on like rentals, and to be thrashed. In 19, we finished the Dodge Rampage. I had never sat in a seat because it didn't have seats in it when I left Detroit. Got here, we debuted it in this booth. When the show was over, I climbed in it, fired it up, drove it out in the in the Las Vegas traffic, and drove to the racetrack, raced it all weekend. That's who we are, that's what we do. Right? So this car, I'm gonna describe some of the components. I'm gonna start underneath. So as part of a driver, we coat the bottoms of our cars. This one has lizard skin coating on the entire bottom of the car. That keeps the noise down, keeps the heat down, does all those things. This has complete TCI suspension, front and rear. We did their front system that they designed for a Falcon. Of course, I can't live with Norm. So I talked to my buddy Sal and I said, we need more. So we adapted a full torque arm rear suspension system from a Mustang and modified it, put it in this car and uh, attached it to a Mosier rear axle. It has a 350 ratio with an Eaton True Track in it. Um, the shocks all the way around it are QA1 double adjustables. Uh, I use QA1 in virtually everything I build. It has a QA1 four inch carbon fiber drive shaft in this. Uh, the brakes are from Bear. They're the Bear Pro Plus series, 14 inch rotor, six piston caliper all the way around. The wheels are from 3030 Autosport and a relatively new company, but Keith Kern, who, who's one of the owners of the company, he's been doing this forever. Virtually every car we build gets Continental tires. This has Continentals as well. I will admit to the fact that they're not the ultimate tire we'll put on it, because these are their all season, but we needed a 295 uh, 30 in the rear and a 245 35 in the front. And if you know anything about tire shortages nowadays, you know why we have a different tire. So, but we have them, they're supposed to be here at the end of the month, so we'll get those on. So, um, the underside is complete, everything's powder coated, everything's done to that level, right? Um, moving on into the car, and when we go into the interior, we used uh, cool tech, cool and thermal tech floor coating, so all the inside of the car is wrapped to keep heat down inside the car. The seats are from TMI, and uh, they supplied the front seats, they reupholstered the rear to match. They're, they're a black leather with, with suede inserts. Uh, we did the dashboard, the kick panels, the rear package shelf, everything is all in suede. Um, kind of class it up a little bit, right? It has a, uh, a, a GT Plus steering wheel in it. One of the really trick things besides the vintage air and all the other creature comforts 
The entire dashboard in this car is CNC from billet aluminum. So we designed it. Aaron uh, had to go way outside of his comfort zone with me pushing him to say, no, no, you can do it. <laughs> but anyway, he created an absolute work of art for the dashboard. And I, and I suggest everyone take a look at that when, we, when you get a chance. Uh, classic Instruments gauges, all of their system in it, everywhere. This is, is an interior. Falcons were a cheap car, right? They were inexpensive, they were light, they were all those things. We've tried to turn every knob to upgrade the interior of this car to make it so that it's, it fits on level with a true Pro Touring kind of Resto Mod series of today, all right? The outside of the car, we made a number of sheet metal modifications, very minor in most of the age. Uh, we made the rear spoiler for it. That's all aluminum. All of the trim that's on this car, including the grill, if you've never built a Falcon, you can't buy a part for a Falcon, right? You can buy anything. You can build a Mustang from a catalog. You're not going to build a Falcon. You're going to have to chase every part. Every molding on this car, the grill, all of the stainless, that's all original from 1964. So it's 58 years old, and it had dents, it had dings. This was, when I bought this car, this was the gentleman's high school car that he drove to high school. All right? So you look it over, look at all of that, you can see how many hours are spent making all that stuff straight and making it shiny. Okay? The paint on this car. When you build a car and you build it on hydrogen and, and you, you're basically chasing that, that zero emission, that low emission thing. The paint on this car come from Exalta. I worked with them on the paint, on the color. Kevin helped me out a lot with that. And uh, this car is painted with waterborne paint. Yeah. So if you've never done that, it's quite an experience. But I think the, the level and the quality speaks for itself. Right? This color is liquid blue, by the way. I love it. And this is the color that Ford used. They invented this color to relaunch the Ford GT. It takes 13 colors plus three pearls to make this paint. So they kept it a secret, the formula for it, for years. And then when they finally released a car in it with this color, this paint, they had to release the formula so that others could make touch-up paint. So we, uh, we were lucky enough to kind of get that formula and make some paint. But Exalta, you know, paint is probably the second highest emission creating thing when it comes to building a car. Using waterborne, fix that. And, I, and I'm going to share this tidbit with you. We built this in my shop, we painted it in my shop. We don't have a spray booth. We have a portable spray booth that we inflate. And we painted the car in that, and then sanded it and rubbed it, of course. But using their level of paint, the quality of that paint, in waterborne, we were able to get this finish without a spray. Okay? All right, let's go on to the next piece. Gene, would you be so kind? So backing up the powertrain in this is a Tremec TKX. Came from American Powertrain. They've been a long supporter of ours. Uh, I already said it has a carbon fiber drive set. We use a McLeod clutch. We have a quick time scanner shield valve housing. This car, power, never heard of it. Cooled by a Griffin radiator. Every fastener used throughout this car is an ARP stainless full point. I just think they have a lot of class. And I always wanted to do it, so this was the opportunity. So, onto the engine. The exhaust, the headers, all come from Cooks. So we had to modify them because they don't make, believe it or not, a 64 Falcon header for, uh, for a Coyote. But we used all their parts, started with a set of their headers and modified them. Okay. Good hinges. It's cool and overfull bottle. They come from Eddie Motorsports. They're one of the few companies that actually builds a Falcon part. So this is a 2022 Ford Crate model, straight out of the crate, 5-liter Coyote. 
It's rated from the factory at 460 horsepower at 7,000 RPM. We've converted it to run on hydrogen. If you don't know, that specific engine has twin injectors. It has direct injectors into the cylinder, and then it has a port injector that they use to add supplemental fuel. In our case, we turned the direct injection to hydrogen, and we turned the port fuel injection into water. And the water allows us, through the magic of the computer, to control the burn rate of the hydrogen. So this engine is not completed yet from that standpoint, but in the testing we've done and all the analytical work, we are going to make more power on hydrogen than an engine made on gas. We will see a 10% increase in performance. So we're going to go from 460 horsepower to just over 500. We're going to be able to increase the RPM because this engine ran at a 7,000 RPM red line because of the burn rate of hydrogen and the time that it takes it to burn in relationship to gasoline. We're going to turn the RPM up to 8,000. And those both allow us to make more power than, than Ford made on gasoline. We're going to send all that power through that McLeod clutch into that Tremec transmission through that QA1 drive shaft. And we're going to send it out through that Mosier rear axle with that even limited slip. And I plan to burn the tires off of this car. If you have, if you're from the media, you have any questions, Susie Bowder, remember she's high? Oh, right here. She's our director of media relations. You can give to her. She can supply you with information. If you have questions for me or any of the people, please ask. We'll be here all week. Thank you.